Well, we are going to solve the equation x plus 2 times the fractional part of x, and that's equal to 3 times the flow of x. Maybe some of you guys haven't seen like, how to solve these kind of equations before, but be sure you guys check out other videos for this and that, their definitions and also their properties. But anyway, pause the video and try this first. Okay, so I will tell you guys what the answer is right here first. Right here, in fact, we have two answers. The first one is x equals 0. That's the trivial one, right? And then the other one is x equals 5 over 3. Well, if you comment down below, let me know if you got this right or not. Anyway, let's see how we can solve this now. Well, well, I cannot just combine x with 2 times the fractional part of x. Right, we cannot do that. But this x right here, we can actually rewrite it. Because for any real number x, we can write it as the flow of x plus the fractional part of x. And let me just write this down right here first. This right here is the same as the greatest integer of x that's less than or equal to x right here, or the flow of x. And then we add the, the fractional part of x. So just a quick example. If x is 4.2, then the flow of x is going to be flow of 4.2, and that will be 4. And then the fractional part of 4.2 is just 0.2. 4 plus 0.2, of course, is 4.2, so that's the idea. And once you use this right here, you can see that you can combine like terms uh, with others as well, but let me just write down the rest. Okay, now, we see this right here, we have one fractional part of x, and then plus two fractional parts of x, so of course, we can just say this is three fractional parts of x. And then, I can just subtract the flow of x on both sides, so you see this right here and that, if I bring that to the other side, 3 flow of x minus flow of x, I end up with 2 flow of x, like this. Okay, now, this is what we're going to do next. It depends on how you want to do it. Perhaps I would like to isolate the flow of x. So let me divide both sides by 2, and we see we have flow of x that's equal to 3 over 2, times the fractional part of x. And why do I want to do that? Because remember, the flow of x, this right here, it always has to be an integer. So let me just write this down right here for you guys. It's always an integer. Positive or negative whole numbers, or maybe even zero. And then if you look at this right here, we always have the fractional part of x, to be in between of 0, and it's okay to be exactly 0, but it has to be strictly less than 1. And now you see, here we have an integer that's equal to 3 over 2 times, you know, a range from 0 to 1. So that means, right here, we must have, let me just once again write this down right here, we must have the flow of x right here. You can just imagine multiply 3 half right here and right here. So we end up with the flow of x that's in between of 0 and less than 3 half. And now, we have this inequality. In fact, we have two situations. So the first one is that, well, give me an integer that's in between of 0, including 0, and less than 3 half. Well, this right here can be exactly zero. So I will just say the first situation is the flow of x is exactly zero, right? Or the second situation is what's another non-zero integer that's in between of zero and three half? Of course, it's just one, right? So another situation is the flow of x is equal to one. From here, we know, well, if the flow of x is zero, that means this right here has to be 0 as well, so that means the fractional part of x is equal to 0, all right? So from here, you can say x is equal to, because we know x is equal to this plus that, so we know x is equal to 0 plus 0, pretty much. So let me just write this down right here for you guys, 0 plus 0. Of course, the answer to this is just 0. This right here is the flow of x, and this right here is the fractional part of x, all right? Okay, from this situation, well, if the flow of x is 1, so here we have 1, we can just solve for the fractional part of x by multiplying by 2 over 3 on both sides, and that is a fraction, right? So we will end up with 
the fractional part of x in this situation to be 2 over 3. If you imagine, if you put 2 over 3 right here, of course you end up with 1. Alright, so from here you can get x is equal to the floor of x, which is 1, and then you add the fractional part is 2 third. And when you add them up, of course you end up with 5 over 3. So this right here will be your answers.